What's going on everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com and today I'm super excited to start a brand new closed legacy in College Hoops 2K8. Now if you remember a couple of months ago I started up a legacy and I had to quit it because I was having freezing issues. Well I think I have fixed those problems. I got a couple tips from some friends and I think I got that problem solved. When you add that in on top of the national championship game is tomorrow night. We also have a lot of college basketball fever in us, and I'm just super excited to get into this. Now, before we do that, I want to show you what that freezing uh, solution is. If you go over to your emulator and you right-click on custom, uh, change custom configuration, this allows you to change the configuration settings for a specific game. You go over to advance, and over here, a driver wake-up delay. I have it set to 200. It was originally at zero, if 200 doesn't work, we can try it at 400. I'm going to try whatever it takes to make it work. I don't want to go three videos in and quit this thing again. That's just no fun. So hopefully that will solve the problem. So let's go back into the game. Now, another bit of motivation for me is if you notice on the screen, I have brand new rosters. This is the 2021 rosters for this game, which is pretty cool. Here's my beloved Vols. You got Kennedy Chandler. Josiah Jordan James, Big John Fulkerson, the eighth year senior who's been here since the Reagan administration. You can go to the ACC, and here you have Duke. There's Paolo Bancaro. Then you got Mark Williams and Griffin, who had a bad game last night. Then you go over to North Carolina. There's Big Baycott, who had like 21 rebounds, just played really well. This is going to be pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to do any conference realignment. That'll take me forever. I'm just happy that I got this roster set to work. Now, speaking of, I'm sure I'm going to get questions about where did you get them, how you put them in, all that good stuff. Well, I can at least help you in terms of providing a link in the description below of where you can get the rosters, and you can figure out how to put them up yourself. Because trust me, I had a bit of difficulty trying to make this work. Maybe down the road, I can put something together together to show you kind of how it went about doing that. But now is not the time for that. Hopefully you can figure it out on your end, whether you play on an emulator or on the PS3. Those rosters should work either way. Now, I'm talking about these rosters because this affects legacy. If you start off with default rosters in this game, you know, you're going to see the same 30 teams that you can pick from. Well, since all of these rosters have been updated, that list will change. So you're going to see some different teams on that list which we will look at here momentarily. Having said all that, let's get into the legacy. We're going to go to game modes, legacy, and new career legacy. Here are my legacy settings. I like to play on 15-minute quarters. I like to keep injuries, player transfers, players leave early, and customize schedule on. I got pop-up help off and customize conferences off again. I don't want to deal with conference realignment even though they do not match what the current roster uh, file that I have is, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. Here we have the create user screen where I can create my coach. I got my name in there, my age, my height, all of my basic stuff, and that's the suit I'm going to go with. So that's all pretty simple stuff there. Here we have the assign a tribute screen. At the beginning of a closed legacy, you can add five initial points or attributes. As you see, I can take those five points off. And I'm going to put all five of them at Charisma. I'm going to be a heavy recruiter guy. I'm going to focus on that, try to master that, get that up to A-plus before I move on to something else. That way we can take those other two assistant coaches and have them be pretty decent at some other things that I may be weak at. Here is the list of teams that I can select from. This is a little bit different, again, from what you may have seen if you are using the default rosters. It all is based off just a handful of teams that are below 70 overall. You see every single one of these is a 69 or lower. And some of these, again, are brand new. I remember seeing, if I'm not mistaken, Texas at Arlington was not on the list before. Either way, I've already picked my team, and I'm going to go with the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. I picked this team for two reasons. One, Eastern Kentucky is pretty close to where I live. And two, that's where my dad went to school, which is pretty neat. So we're going to go with the Colonels. As you can tell, they're 69 overall. Okay on offense, not so much on defense. It's still a pretty bad team, but it should be a whole lot of fun. So we're going to select them. Now let's select our assistant coaches. Again, I want a couple of coaches that have some strengths that offset any weaknesses my head coach has. So we've already got the charisma down. One thing I do want to find is a good scouter. Somebody who can go in and find 
decent information on some of these kids. And it looks like the best one at this point is this cool guy. He's got a C overall in scouting, so let's select him. Now, the other spot, I want somebody who can teach halfway decent. And I'm a big practice guy. You can assign uh, different practice things to your players so they can focus on certain attributes so they can increase at certain things. So I think which is pretty cool. And we're going to select somebody who's got the best teaching attribute. So it's either the Seymour guy or it's Covington. Now, from the looks of it, this guy has a little bit better defensive attributes as well. Looks like he's a little bit better across the board than this guy. And he doesn't have as much ambition either, which doesn't hurt my feelings. Now, you can see Kuehl up at the top. He's got good ambition, which means he may want to leave kind of early, which is fine. We can always replace these guys. But we're going to go with Seymour. Here is our schedule. I can add a preseason tournament. I can change things around. I'm not going to this season. I don't really care at the point at this moment. But we do have Duke on the schedule, which would be pretty cool. And we got just a handful of non-conference games, and that's kind of it. Then it goes right into the heart of the conference schedule. So I'm pretty happy with that. Here we have the ABL uh, feature, which is pretty neat. Now, I'm going to simulate the ABL. If you have plenty of time to do it, by all means, attend the ABL. Watch a lot of those games. Play them. That way you can get extra game info on these players. You get extra recruiting points to use. It's in my best interest to attend it, but I'm not going to because this legacy is going to be long enough as is. So we're going to go ahead and simulate it. So here is our initial schedule. It's in calendar form. Now, what I'm going to do for this video is we are going to do all of our recruiting up until our very first game, which is against ETSU. So that's what we're going to do going forward. But I just want you to see kind of what was going to be ahead of this video. I do want to show the preview video. Hopefully this will work, the little pregame show or the preseason show. It's pretty cool. We're going to try to do that. So we got a lot of recruiting ahead of us, so let's get into it. Before we get in recruiting, let's look at our coaching profile and some of the specifics of kind of what I want to accomplish schematically. I'm going to set recruiting at manual, of course, and when it comes to recruiting priorities, I'm going to focus on shooting and rebounding. Now, I'm going to adjust to my talent as best as I can once we get on the court, but in general, I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. I want good fundamental players. I want guys who can shoot, especially the smaller guys, and I want big guys who can rebound and maybe post up and such. So we're really going to focus on shooting and rebounding, and anything else that comes with it, that'd be great. Now, when it comes to our offense, I'm a big stat guy. This is pretty much just a basic three-out, two-in offense. I like having a couple wings on the outside who can shoot or who can drive the lane. I like having a point guard who can assist, who can also maybe shoot threes occasionally. And my two big guys, I want guys who can post up and who can rebound a lot. So stat kind of fits that best compared to the rest of the schemes in this game. Primary defense, I'm going to do man for the most part, but I'm going to sneak in some zone whenever the occasion arises. It just kind of depends on who we're going to go up against. But for now, I'm going to set all that to man, and I can change this on the fly during the game at any moment. When it comes to pressing, as of now, I'm going to put that at never. I can do some pressing if I want to, but you're going to see here in a little bit our roster isn't really set up for that, but that's okay. In time, I may do a little pressing, but I really want to focus on the half-court game. Be really good on both ends. Not so much. We're not going to be much of a transition team, at least while I'm here at Eastern Kentucky. I may change that when I switch jobs a few years down the road, just depending on how well I do. But for now, we're going to be a really solid half-court team that really focuses on the fundamentals. We're going to do our bench step at 10. Just the way the substitution works in this game in terms of like players getting fatigued and getting uh, healthy enough to get back into the game, I always feel like I'm playing 10 guys all the time. That may be a setting I can change later on, but for now, I'm going to keep it at 10. It's all manual for me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then we got these last four sliders, which I think are really cool. When it comes to offensive tempo, we're going to set this at 60. Again, we're just going to really focus on the half-court game. We're not going to try to score as quickly as possible. We're going to try to set up good shots, try to use some decent plays, not a whole lot. But when it comes to pressure, I'm going to keep this at, well, let's do it at 70 for now. We're going to be a pretty tight defense, but the biggest thing is we're going to really focus on rebounding. You notice we got this slider much closer to defensive rebound compared to fast break, and especially true for this one. We really want to crash the boards. I want to be a really good offensive rebounding team, which I'm excited about. It's been a long time since I've went this direction. 
here is our playbook. I will adjust a couple of these plays later on, but as you can see, it's the same setup. We got a point guard at the top of the key, then you got two wing players, then you got two big guys, either on the elbow or going down low at the block. And that's just kind of the way I like to set things up. And I'm going to add a couple of different plays here eventually. Like there's a couple of plays that really feature the point guard being able to get a decent three, that type of thing. We'll get to that in time. I'll figure that out over the course of the season. Here is our roster. Now, this is set up with the situational lineups. I think this is a better way to kind of showcase who was what. Our starting five, as you can tell, our best player is his shooting guard right here. Jamaro Brown. Now, he can't shoot all that well. He's just okay. 70 on the three-pointer, 74 on the medium. Free throw's okay. He could dunk a little bit, uh, but overall, he's just a solid player. Now, our best, second-best guy is probably this point guard. Now, he could shoot the three really well. I almost wanted to switch these two guys up, and I may do that in time. We'll just see how much I can get this guy open on the three. But as you can tell, I don't have a whole lot of height. We got 5'10", 6'2", 6'7", 6'6", and a 6'9", kid who's a power forward, which I would love to play at the four spot. The problem is we literally have no other big guys outside of one other player. As you can tell, point guard, shooting guard, shooting guard, small forward, small forward, point guard, point guard, shooting guard, shooting guard, power forward, and a small forward that's going to like red shirt or something. Uh, so this is our other big guy, Iron Bennett. I was normally going to start him having play center, but we have no back big guys backing up our number one big guy. So he's going to be our backup center. So that's what we're going to go through. We're not going to go through our power forward much at all. As you can tell, our starting power forward, our force guy, is going to be a 59 overall. And we got nothing at the force spark behind him. So it's just going to be really tough. Hopefully these guys don't get too tired too often. That's one of the reasons why I want to keep the game a little bit slow so these guys don't run around rampant because we don't have a big bench to work with. But the good thing is, you notice we got a handful of guys who can shoot the three okay. 73, 76, 73. You go up here, our best three-point shooter, this small forward, Michael Moreno, an 85 three-pointer. And of course, our point guard and such. Over the course of the season, you're going to get used to these players and whatnot, but for as of now, this is going to be my starting five. Here is training and conditioning. I will adjust this in time. As you can see, we can adjust week to week for each individual player, which is really neat. I'm just not going to do that right now. I'm going to do that outside of a video, and I'll show you my results later on on how I like to do that. Here we have recruiting. This is the heart of the game. This is where things get a whole lot of fun. It's very in-depth. It's quite challenging, and I'm looking forward to diving into a lot of this. So let's get into it now. You see at the very top right, I got five scholarships to give, so what I'm going to do is I normally, when I'm in this particular position with a bad team, I like to go after specific things, like big guys, like centers and power forwards that are two-star kids that are really tall. I tend to do pretty well with those. There are plenty of seven-footers in this game, and I just need guys who can rebound a little bit, and if they can post up, that's even better. But when it comes to the guards, I need some guys who can really score and such. But normally what I like to do is go after four-star kids that do get that do not get scholarships from the big guys. These are the kids that fall through the cracks. We're going to look at those guys, but we can't look at those until these other uh, schools start adding scholarships to players. Then we'll be able to tell who to go after. So when you go look at our schedule, today, you know, we're going to go through all of this recruiting right here. But it's going to be very simple. I'm only going to go look at just a handful of two- and three-star kids. We're going to keep on our target list because once we get, I think it's this week right here is when you start seeing some guys get scholarships. No, it's this week right here, I think. Once that is over with, then I think we can get into looking at some scholarship players and looking at the scraps beyond that. I could be dead wrong. I'm super sorry if that's the case. It's been a while since I played it. But as soon as these other teams put scholarships on some players, then we'll be able to go after some of those four-star kids. So for now, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to recruiting, and we're going to sort some of this. And the first thing you're going to notice, we're going to go to seniors. I'm not going to recruit any juniors or sophomores. We don't have enough points for that. we got a lot of spots to fill. We need immediate help now. I may go after JUCO kids, but I'm not a big keen on getting those. Not really. I mean, they're in there, but one thing you can do, for example, is you can sort this. You can tell there's several two-star kids that are maybe worth going after. I may need to look into it, but you notice all the positions that are interested in me that are really high. 
Center, power forward, center, power forward, point guard, power forward, center, power forward. We need big guys in the worst way. As you could tell earlier, our roster is very void of big guys. So we're going to focus on that. So what we're going to do is I want to go to seniors first. I want to build my program through high school kids, not so much JUCO players. And we're going to go to three stars first. So two and three star kids is usually what I go after until I can find some of those four star kids that can sneak through uh, those cracks. Now, again, I'm probably going to get a lot of comments saying go after world players. Yes, world players are okay. I'm not the biggest fan of going after them. I mean, you can get them, but like a three star world player is more or less like a two star national player. So they're not the end all be all. The big positive with these, though, is that nobody goes after them. So you kind of have, you know, free reign over who to go after. It just takes a while because, again, the highest world player in terms of interest is like a 52 overall. That's not a whole lot. So we're going to go back. I'm going to put this at a three star. So anything three and below should pop up right here. And we're going to go local. As you can tell, we're going to go center. When you look at focus on centers, I want two centers at least. We're going to go regional. And here are the three-star and two-star. Is it just three stars? It looks like it's just the three-star kids. If you go to two-star, look at this, 81, 80. So we got a good chance. Now, for centers, I need humongous individuals. 6'7", six, 6'9", six, 6'8", six, that's not going to cut it. 6'10", 213, maybe. We can scout this kid. He's got a crazy name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Here's a seven-footer, 247 pounds. Nobody's going after him. Let's go ahead and scout this kid. We're going to request game tape. We're going to let our good scouting report assistant coach handle that. We can look and see what he's got here. He is awful on the rebounds, but again, he's so big, you can kind of make up for a little bit of that. I'm going to add him to the target list just for now. The rest of these, I'm going to go up here and may leave it at that. So for the, this 6'7", 216 senior, it's not going to work. <laughs> He's off on the rebound. It just, trust me, it's just not going to work. So let's go to the three-star and see if we got a chance. Pretty much anything that's 60% and above, I need to look at. This kid right here, if you notice the little basketball logo beside his uh, state and uh, city, he is Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin. Go after the Mr. Basketball kids. By all means, do that. You got a chance. I mean, these guys end up being decent players. And the fact that it's 69% for this kid, I'm definitely going to go after him. We're going to go scout him. I'm going to add him to the target list. I want to make sure I added that other guy, and we did. Allie, uh, Allie Duncan, yeah. So we're going to look at that guy alone, and let's go back to the two stars. We got 80 and 75 again. I made, like, this 6'9", 235, I don't mind going after him. Let's request game tape. As you can tell, it's already kind of tight as is. But we may have a chance. Let's add him to the target list. You can look at... Uh, look at this. His rebounding is really good. I definitely wouldn't mind having him now. So those are a couple of guys at center we can look at. Power 4, we can look there. Now, a lot of these power 4s, you look at this kid right here. 6'5", 199. He is not a power 4. He's probably going to play small forward. So you can probably find power forwards who can play on the wing for me who can shoot the three a little bit. For example, this kid right here, really close to home, Slade Edwin, that's a great name, out of Lexington. Three, uh, C minus on the three-pointer, but he looks like a decent power forward. More like, he could be a true power forward. Do we got a chance with this kid? I think it's at least worth putting uh, a target on him. I definitely don't mind doing that. The rest of these, we just got to be careful. I don't, I really want to, be careful about how many points I spend. Thankfully, your points carry over over time. We can look at the three-star. Here's a 69%er guy out of Illinois, Clarence Salo, Salo. We can look at a couple of these. As you can tell, some of these guys we may not have a chance at, but we can at least request game tape and see if they fit what we want. We'll take about anything at this point. So you go look at this kid right here, B minus on defensive rebound. I'd take him in a heartbeat. This kid right here, uh, low post D, not all bad. The blocking's okay. This kid right here would be okay. So I'm going to add the target list to all three of these guys if I can. We'll do that. So how many we're up to? We're up to seven guys. So one thing we can do is if you look at small forward, 
not a whole lot of action there. 57% for the shooting guard. Point guard looks like it's a little bit high. So here's a kid that's 68% out of Gary, Indiana, home of the Jackson 5, Michael Jackson, that whole group up there. 6'2", 175 for Gregory Simpson. You look at his list, he's already got us kind of the very bottom there at 7th. But I don't mind at least scouting him. And we can add him to the target list, and we can look at that later. As you can see here, a point guard is not saying a whole lot. B minus on speed, which is okay. Layup, B minus. So I don't know if he'll do much for us, but we can at least scout him. Now let's go to the two stars really quick. A lot of guys in the 70s here, point guard. So as you can see here, shooting guard is not as much. Small forward, just okay. But this is where it gets, again, centers and power forwards is what we're really looking for. So let's go to this power forward situation. Here's a kid out of Memphis, Tennessee. Only 6'5", He may be playing small forward for me if he... Well, here's like a 6'10", 234, 6'7". So what we can do is at least request game tape on these three guys for now. I'm okay with that. And let's look at all three. This guy's okay. Uh, I want to see if he can shoot the three first before I go after him. Um, this kid right here, 6'10". D on the defensive rebound, not all that great. Here's a kid at C- minus on the defensive rebound. I don't think I'm going to leave him at green for now. I don't need to put them all on the target list. I think you can only put 15 guys in that situation. So how many points do we got left? We got 179 points. We can definitely spend some of that. I don't really want to spend all of it right now. But let's go back to this point guard spot. We got four of these guys that look like are worth at least putting some game tape on. So let's do that. We'll do that for our assistant coach who can do that a little bit better than the rest. So let's look at these four. The low post passing, none of that really... F handle. That is awful for this kid. F, F, and F. So none of these guys can handle the ball all that well. So I may not bother with that one. So I think for now what we can do is let's just go back to recruiting, reset it all the whole thing let's look at our targets and let's go by the three stars first and just kind of go from there and see if we actually have a chance with some of these so power forward this kid right here i think is worth taking a chance on uh let's first let me just look here let's go and see looks like we got a decent chance with this kid right here six nine center out of fort wayne indiana C plus, on, yes, we need to prioritize this kid. So let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's scout him. We really can't. Let's go visit him instead. Let's visit him. Let's phone the recruit as well. And one thing we can do is phone the recruit for all of these. We'll do that with our head coach since he's got the charisma that we need for it. I don't mind doing that for every one of these kids. I don't really bother with the emails. I can do that. I think you can send emails like unlimited if you wanted to. So this is the kid I think we really want to prioritize. And we were down to 34 points, so I think I'm okay. Uh, we can do email really quick for all of them if that's going to help. Again, it doesn't matter who handles this. He doesn't have enough points. We can do this for over here. And we'll email the rest of these guys. And, okay, that's going to be our initial target list for now. This will fill up much quicker once we get to see some of the four-star kids. For example, you go to all targets, you go to four-star players, and if you notice, none of these guys have scholarships yet. They will eventually. That's when we, we will really do some damage. Now, let's go ahead and go to our schedule, and we're going to simulate, and we're going to go to the preview show. I want you to see that. Now, we got the Midnight Madness thing right here. We're going to simulate through the day. Oh, I'm going to back out first. We're going to simulate up to this point right here. And we're going to show you the preview show. I think it's going to be really cool. Hopefully, I'll get that to working correctly. If not, I'll just skip it all together. So we're going to select Simulate Through Day. And let's see if we can watch this preview show. Greg Gumbel with Mark Kellogg. We're here with the 2K Sports Season Preview Show. These 
These are the top five teams in college hoops as we begin the new season. The UCLA Bruins come in as the number one ranked team, followed by Oregon, North Carolina, Kansas, and Gonzaga. So, Clark, what's your initial impression of our top five teams? Sometimes the top players in the nation and the best teams in the nation aren't necessarily together at the top of the pole. But going into this season, we have some of the absolute best players playing on the marquee team. That's really exciting to me. UCLA is in the catbird seat to start the season, sitting pretty in the number one spot. They were unstoppable last season, finishing with 30 wins. Winning that many games again is going to be extremely difficult, no matter how much talent they have. Not many teams play that many games, never mind win that many. They'll be on the verge of dynasty status if they repeat that performance. Oregon is in the number two spot. They had a nice finish to the year, but it ended with a disappointing loss in the regional final. They were so close to the final four, they could taste it. The memory of that elite eight loss should be all the motivation they need this year to work just that little bit harder. We'll see if they can get over the hump this time. North Carolina comes in as number three. They are a very strong team, but they have plenty of competition from within their own league. Their regular season is going to be a melee with all the other tough teams in the conference. The key for them to survive is going to be consistency. They can't afford to drop any easy game. Kansas starts the year as the fourth-ranked team. The experts are having a hard time classifying this team because they have such versatile players. What I think will be one of their strengths is their ability to adapt to their opponent's style of play. They'll be able to come at you in a lot of different ways, and I think the coaching staff is going to take full advantage of that chameleon style. Gonzaga is the number five team. They had a wonderful year last season, finishing with 23 wins. That 20-win plateau is one of those benchmarks in college hoops that immediately classifies you as an elite team. So they're going to have a tough act to follow. But if they simply play to their potential, they can reach that mark again. Here's the next group of teams in our preseason top 25. What do you think of this group, Clark? With such a long season ahead of us, it's almost impossible to put a finger on just who the contenders and pretenders are from this set of teams. But that doesn't mean we won't try. The Memphis Tigers, the number 12 team, have been talked about quite a bit as we head into the season. This team may lean on some untested players this season. That might not be a bad thing, Clark. A few of the players on this team who didn't get the chance to play quality minutes last season are poised to step right into the spotlight and have breakout years this season. You may not know their names now, but you will soon. The Tennessee Volunteers, the number eight team, have also generated a lot of interest. They wrapped up their season last year with a trip to the Sweet 16, but it ended there. A similar result this year probably won't satisfy them. They've got the potential to go a step beyond the Sweet 16, but just getting back there is going to be a disappointment, not an achievement. Okay, Clark, let's take a look at the teams to close out the preseason top 25 poll. What do you think of this collection? I'm not convinced that all of these teams belong in the top 25. I don't want to pick out anyone in particular, but I think some teams that aren't on the list can make a pretty strong case as to why they belong. Arkansas Razorbacks, the number 20 team, could be one to watch. They rolled to second place in their conference last year in the regular season. As good as that sounds, I think it was a bit of a letdown for them. They wanted to come out on top, and they probably still have a sour taste in their mouth from not getting it done. The Xavier Musketeers, the number 25 team, are also worth keeping an eye on. This school has developed a reputation for having some of the most rabid fans in college hoops. Walking into their building is going to be a tough proposition for a lot of their opponents. They can get that place rocking, and I wouldn't be shocked if they lose very few, if any, games at home this season. We've come to the part of the show when we look at the top players in the nation and unveil the list of our preseason All-Americans. There before you are the five first-team All-Americans as we begin the season, and what a list it is. What's your take on the first team we're at the top of the list, Mark? Number one, it's tremendous talent, Greg. What I like about him most is his ability to find the soft spot in an opposing defense and exploit it. He can do it no matter how a defense chooses to play him. I have yet to see a team truly shut him down. As for our next first team, Wisconsin is more than willing to go into battle with him, Clark. David really is an elite talent. That's a given. There's plenty to like about him as a player. He's got that deadly combination of smarts and physical skills that makes him so difficult to defend. The coach's mentality in the body of a world-class athlete 
Any questions as to why he's on the list? Next up is a player that's drawing comparisons to some of the all-time college greats. The UCLA Bruins are fortunate to have him in their corner. Number 25 is a first-teamer without a doubt. He has such versatility. He can take it and rake it, get down the court with the ball and make plays. He'll be a nearly impossible matchup for their opponent. Let's move on to a player who's worked very hard to earn his spot on the list. The Duke Blue Devil can depend on a solid effort from him each and every night. Number five is the anchor of his team. If they're going to the promised land, he's the one that's going to lead them there. We always talk about the guys with great hands. Well, he's got great feet. I love those happy feet. There are few players in the nation with better footwork than him. And that's what allows him to always be in the right position, whether it comes to rebounding, finding space for open shots. And finally, we have another superb player to round out the first team. The Illinois Fighting Illini will probably get used to seeing him make the impossible look ordinary. Number 21 already has opposing coaches growing up game plans designed to stop him. But it won't matter what they come up with. Give him too much room and he'll burn you off the dribble. Or play him tight and watch him find a teammate for an easy hoop. One way or the other, he's unstoppable. Now let's move on to the second team, all American. Not such a bad list, huh? These elite players all have the potential to have historic seasons if the right pieces fall into place. The UCLA Bruins have built their team around this young man's talent. I'd say that's a pretty good idea. Campbell was a very hard player to leave off the first team. If I had to pick some front runner for the Player of the Year award, he would be right there on the list. I've seen him take over games even when he isn't scoring 30. There are some great scores among these All-Americans. He's one of them, but he does much more than score. Our next player is a tremendous talent in his own right. Kansas is in for a treat if he can pull it all together and have a great year. Number 20 is someone you can look at as last season progress and see his improvement on a weekly basis. I have no doubt he belongs on this All-American team, and I think the sky's the limit for him this season. We can all look forward to some very exciting highlights from this young man this year. The UCLA Bruins are looking for a lot of production from him, and they probably won't be disappointed. Number three, has terrific skill in so many facets of the game. It isn't out of the realm of possibility to say that he might even be a little bit underrated. I know it seems far-fetched to say that about a preseason All-American pick, but I'm not sure people realize just what a huge year he's in for, Greg. Our next All-American may have designs on the first team by the end of the season. Indiana has one of the most reliable built you guys in the country in town. Number 23 is one of the first players that came to mind when I was thinking of the top 10 players in the nation. The success of his team rests directly on his shoulder, and I believe he has the ability to take them all the way to the title. Here is the final player to cap off our list of All-Americans. The North Carolina Tar Heels know who their fan favorite is going to be this year. Number five, last but not least on the All-American list. His upside is higher than a lot of the other guys here because he has so much raw ability. He could jump to the first team this year if he harnesses all that ability into the complete pack. All right, Clark, thanks very much. Glad you could join us for the 2K Sports Season Preview. We hope you enjoy all the college hoops action ahead. So long, everyone. Hopefully you enjoy that preview show. I can add that later on at the beginning of a, or at the preseason for future seasons if you want me to. I thought that was pretty cool. So what we got next is we got a couple more weeks of recruiting and we're going to focus on that. Now, one thing we got left is we can redshirt if we need to. So we can go back to coach's office and management and roster. We can go, uh, yeah, we can go to roster and there's really nobody I want to redshirt. There's no freshman like this kid right here. He's going to come off the bench and do some things for me. Hey, he's a three point. He's not much of a three pointer, is he? Like, I could redshirt him, but we're kind of running out of players, so I'm not going to redshirt anybody. I, anybody that's that bad is not worth redshirting. No offense to them. So we're going to go right here, and we're going to simulate through the rest of this, and we should be able to go into recruiting and start spending some points on some extra guys. Now, one thing we can do is go to all. We can check the four-star kids again and see if looks like nobody has any scholarships again. That'll, I think it's going to come next week. So what we're going to do is just go back to our target list. And we're going to spend some points on the guys that we are going to focus on at the moment. So, for example, where is the guy? I want to go after this kid, especially just because he is a uh, All-State or he's Mr. Basketball in the state of Wisconsin. We're going to put some points on him, but we're also going to go back to this guy. I think we got a really good chance at if I can find him. Where's he at? This kid right here, the kid out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're going to invite him to campus. Before we do that, let's look and make sure. We're, yeah, we're in decent shape here. So what we're going to do, we're going to invite him to campus. 
We're going to phone the recruit, and we're going to email him. Now we're already down just 122 points. I'm going to take a chance on this kid out of Wisconsin. Again, if you can find guys that are Mr. Basketball players, I've had really good luck with those. So I'm going to go and let's visit him. Let's do that, and we're going to phone the recruit. And now we're down to just 32 players. So what we're going to do, going with the rest of these, let's phone the rest of these. And we will be done with this week's recruiting, which is going to be really quick. And then in the next week, we're going to look at some four-star kids. Maybe they got their scholarships by then. Again, I think it's after this. If you go back to schedule, I'm quite positive. It's once you get past this week is when they can sign. I, I, I forgot. We're going to find out here really shortly. So let's go ahead and send for the next week. So here we are in this next week. Now we can go over to recruiting and see again. Here are the five-star kids. You can tell nobody has any scholarships yet. Again, maybe that'll come next week. We're going to find out. So that means we're just going to go back and do our normal thing. We're going to go back to our target list. And we're going to go back to those two guys that I'm really interested in. So as you can tell, this guy went up to 89% on the interest. Now he's got a, uh, a scholarship through there. So we're going to find those other guys to get scholarships here eventually. I'm going to offer him a scholarship. And we're going to visit him. And look how close we are with IUPUI. So you look here... And, and dang it, if you go back to this player right here, I can get to it. There we go. I still want to find out more about him, but I've seen enough to know that I want this kid. So we're going to phone the recruit. We're going to do everything we can to go after him. So he's going to be right there. This EB kid, do we got a chance with him? I don't think we got a chance with him. We are ninth on his list, and it doesn't even show six through seven. So I think we're wasting our time with this one. So I'm going to remove him from our list, and we can move on to somebody else. Now, how many points we got? We got 147 points left. Let's look at the rest of these and see what we're dealing with. Like, this kid right here, we got no chance at. 12th on the list. He's fixing to commit to Valparaiso. So we're going to remove him from the list. This next guy looks like we got no chance. He's dead set of going to a couple different places. It's going to be really hard to move all the way up on that list. So we're going to remove him from our list as well. We're going to do that. Come back here. Let's look at this next guy. Again, we're so far back on this one. I mean, what's the point? It looks like he's really wanting to go to Eastern Michigan. Looks like he wants to stay home. If you go back to something like this. Oh, we, we don't have enough contact on him to know what he's interested in. What we do know is he doesn't want to come here. So we're going to remove him from the list. We're going to look at this sallow kid. Again, we're so far back. I don't think we got a chance on him. So I'm not going to bother with this one either. So we're going to take him off the list. We know this guy we got a chance at. We got a really good chance of getting him. You can see play, getting plenty of playing time. So that's good for us. We got plenty of room at the center position. Then it's being close to home. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Look who we're competing against. A team out of Indiana. So this one's going to be a tough battle. But I still think we got a chance. So we're going to leave him there. Ally, Ally Duncan, we got a chance here. We're top of his list. And I think we're going to start putting some points on this kid for sure. Let's visit him. We can. I'm going to go ahead and offer the scholarship for him. We're going to phone the recruit. We're going to email the recruit. And then we got this power four, this senior. And look at this. We got a really good chance at him. Let's look at his stats here. I think I'm okay with what I'm seeing. I can make do with him. He's got a C- minus on the three-point, which means he's going to be a definitely power forward for us. Can he low post? He's got a C low post offense. That's not bad. So we're going to put a scholarship on him. And we're going to visit him. And we're going to email him. And these are the three guys we're going to go after in terms of two-star. I think we got a good chance at getting all three. Now we're down to two points, so we're pretty much done on the point side of things. So let's go back to schedule. And let's simulate the rest of this week. Here is our next upcoming week. Now, we got our first game of the season this week. So we're going to finish up recruiting now. And then we're going to finish up the video. Um, see if we're going to look at some more recruits. So let's go over to recruiting. Let's go to recruits. And here is the top players in the country. If you notice, now they're starting to show off some scholarships for some of these kids. So what we're going to do is find players that do not have any scholarships on them. Good luck finding any five-star kids. So what we're going to do is go to 
I'm going to go to seniors. Again, I really don't want to go after underclassmen nor JUCOs. But we're going to go for seniors. We're going to look at just five-star kits. And if you notice, every single one of these has at least one scholarship. So there's no point going after any of these, which makes sense. We would have no chance going after any of them. But when you go to four-star, you may find one or two. So let's go to the four-star kits and see what we're dealing with. For example, here's a kid out of El Paso, Texas. For some reason, nobody wants to go after him. Who knows why? Let's uh, add, a, add him to the target list. Let's keep going. Here's another kid, a point guard, Mario Avery out of Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and add him to the list. Let's keep going. Look at these other guys. Here's another point guard. I mean, there's going to be a ton of these guys that we can go after. So what we're going to do, and there, as you can tell, there are a ton of four stars. I mean, a lot of them. So what I would prefer is we can go by point guard first. We know we need some point guard help. So this kid out of California may be worth looking at. So I don't mind putting a scholarship on him or adding him to the target list at least. We can find a couple other ones, maybe. So that's it for the point guard. Shooting guards. As you can tell, we don't have a whole lot of chance with on the shooting guard front. Every single one of these has a scholarship, except for a couple of these guys down here. We don't know why. I'm still going to add him to the list. You never know. We can look here. Here's another guy we can add. And we got plenty of space on our target list, at least for now. So here's the last guy. Mr. Basketball out of Nevada. Let's go, go ahead and scout him, or let's go add him to the target list. I mean, we're talking four-star kids, any of these guys. I don't even have to look at their attributes. I don't have to look at any of this to know that we got to, you know, we're going to bring in some really good guys in terms of what I need. I know I can make them fit somehow, some way. So let's go back to, like, small forwards. Let's look at these. We can go over here. Here's a, a kid out of Indiana. For whatever reason, nobody wants to go after him, and I don't understand why. But as soon as somebody like Butler offers him a scholarship, then we will cut ties with the kid. But for now, let's just go ahead and add him. We're down to 10. We need a couple more spots left. Or we got five spots left. Like, here's another kid out of Arizona. Let's go ahead and add him. Here's another one out of Austin, Texas. Oh, this may be the one we looked at earlier. And here's, last but not least, this guy out of Louisiana. For whatever reason, nobody wants to go after him just yet. Let's add him to the list. And just at the beginning, we are only going to do a phone call for some of these guys. So let's go back up here. Let's go to Power Forward. Here's a kid out of Alabama nobody wants to go after. We can add him to the list. That's number 14, so we need to be careful. It may fit perfectly for us. Like, here's another one. We're going to wait on that one. Let's look at centers. Let's go up to the very top. And there's not many centers that are four-star kids. And look at that. That's going to be just perfect for us. You go back to that one power forward. This was the last four-star kid that didn't have any scholarships. So what we're going to do is just add him to the list. And just like that, we have filled up all 15 spots on our target list. And here they all are. We're going to sort this by how we have it sorted in terms of here are the three guys we know we got a really good chance at. I want all three of these guys for sure. So we're going to continue. Let's look at this Duncan kid. I think we're going to get this kid very easily. Nobody wants to go after him except us. Getting playing time and feeling wanted. We're going to give him plenty of that. So we are in great shape for this one, guys. So let's go ahead and buy him to campus. And we're going to phone the recruit and we're going to email the recruit. Next up. Do we got a chance with this kid? It's going to be really close. We're in it with IUPUI. But I think we got, as long as we keep showing him love, we got a chance. So let's just do the full shebang. Then he got this power forward. We got to show him some love some way, as well. He's a local kid. I'd love to have him. But we're running out of points. He doesn't have enough points to go with that. So let's do this. Let's... I'm not going to request game tape on any of these kids. There's no point... We all know that all these four-star kids can play. So we're just going to phone the recruit until we run out of points on some of these. And then again, over time, we're already down. We're, at, we're down to two points. So I can email the rest of these guys. That's fine. 
he doesn't have enough points at all. And, it, okay, we're done. That's good enough. We don't have to do emails for the rest of these. I mean, we can. It's not going to help a whole lot. Because if you email one guy and email him again, okay, it does go away at least. So let's just email the rest of these. Just to be safe, he is out of points. We can email them, and we can email him, and we can email him. Let's just email the rest of these guys. Might as well. It doesn't actually cost any points to send an email, apparently. And that is it. So I think we are in great shape for recruiting. So again, we got these three guys. We got a real good chance at at least two of them. I think we could get all three, and then we're going to spend the rest of our season picking apart which one of these four-star kids, two or maybe a couple of them, that we actually have a chance at. It just comes down to, is somebody going to throw a scholarship at that kid? And so we'll adjust accordingly. Okay, come on back in our next, we're going to simulate up to this point right here. In our next video, we are going to play our first game of the season. I think I may just play every game. I'm not a big fan of simulating this stuff. So, can I... There we go. Here's the matchup against East Tennessee State. So this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Come on back. It's going to be great. I can't wait to get into it. And I'll talk to you later.